What did we just witness? That sounded crazy. Laser engraving on a three-dimensional object? We've owned a lot of laser engravers, but this is the first laser engraver that's equipped with 3D laser engraving technology. We typically wait to show you the climax of our videos till the end, but we just had to show you a portion of what that looked like and what that sounds like. It's wild. Before we show you other things we've engraved, including a Benchy, let's unbox this engraver and talk about why it's unique. The EM Smart AXI laser engraver comes with a dynamic Z-axis and dual laser focusing system, which means you can choose between fiber laser engraving or diode laser engraving. The fiber laser is 25 watts and the diode is 20 watts. Is that strong enough to cut through metal? You'll find out. The laser engraver reaches speeds up to 15,000 millimeters per second. I can't imagine what that would look like on a 3D printer. It can engrave on hundreds of different materials like leather, rubber, plastic, metal, and wood. The laser engraver is tall and heavy, but doesn't take up much space on the desk, making it ideal for most people. On the left, there's a manual focus knob, and on the right, there's the emergency shut off, the power button, and manual focus buttons. Let's show you how it engraves on wood, leather, and metal, then we'll engrave a plastic 3D Benchy. We'll start with the Eiffel Tower on wood. This is a huge file, so I'll shrink it down and preview where it will engrave before starting the engraving. That came out really good. I'd probably turn the power down if I were to run it again. Now let's engrave on leather. Winter is coming, so I'll engrave a guy on a snowboard. That came out looking perfect. I'm shocked. You can't see any laser lines at all. And that's because the AXI Pro engraving precision is at 0.001 millimeters. That's called high precision engraving. I use the blue diode laser for both the wood and the leather objects. Now let's try engraving with the fiber laser on this metal object. At first it wasn't working, but after adjusting the laser focus, I was able to get it to engrave. Pretty sweet glasses, huh? Once I got the laser engraver to work on this metal, I decided to run a few more passes to deepen the engraving. The detail on this logo is amazing. Look at the tiny copyright symbol. It's tiny but legible. It's almost time for the Benchy engraving, but first let's see if it can engrave and cut through this blade. This sounds crazy and looks pretty cool. Look at how the metal is bending as it's cutting. Let me try to straighten that metal and flip it over to engrave the other side. It's super hot, so I'll use pliers. <laughs> Whoops. As I was bending it back, it just snapped in half. But there you go. Before we engrave a Benchy, we'd love for you to subscribe. We're almost at our next goal and we literally can't get there without your help. But don't subscribe if you don't like our content, that's just not fair to you. All right, let's engrave on a 3D printed Benchy. I need to identify the speed and power to engrave on PLA. I'll start with the flat surface just to dial in these settings. That first pass was way too much power and not enough speed. You can see it just melted the plastic. We're looking for something that will be more almost painting instead of engraving. The second pass was a lot better, but still slow. Let's put it on its side and try engraving happy birthday at a thousand millimeters per second and 20% speed. That came out really good and it was so fast. I'll make one last adjustment and bring this down to 10%. That's perfect, it's time to engrave on a 3D dimensional side. I'll position the boat on its back so it stands like this. The first step in engraving a 3D object is to add the object to the software. Luckily, I have the STL file for this object. I know what you're thinking, what if you don't have a file because it's not something you 3D printed, maybe it's an object in your house or something you bought online. We will get to that. Now that the file is uploaded, I need to angle it and find the perfect angle that matches the location and the way that it sits on the platform. I'll try 80 degrees first. That's close, but not perfect. Let's try 70 degrees. That's closer, but there's still that tiny gap. I think I know the perfect number. 67 degrees. 
depending on where you're located in the world and depending on when you're watching this video, 67 or better phrase 67 might not mean anything to you. But right now at the filming of this video, people get so excited or upset when they hear 67, 67, anything close to that. You can look it up, but I can't believe that's the angle of the boat. I didn't choose 67, 67 chose me. <laughs> Moving on, the next step is to add the file you want to engrave. I'll add a skull since this is kind of like a ship or a pirate ship. I need to size it down and change the angle. You can see it's just on the plate and not projected on the boat. To change that, you click on the 3D param, select a 3D object and click apply. There we go. The red color signifies it's out of focus, it's too high. I'll bring this down below the bed and try our first test. That didn't work out so well. I didn't have the boat perfectly aligned. Let's try this again. That does not look proportionate to the skull I was working with. Going back to the software, I realized I clicked projection instead of coded. You'll see when I click coded, the head looks more like a normal skull and not stretched like the one on the boat. Let's try this again. There we go, that looks amazing. I love how it turned out. I think I could dial these settings a little better and have it a little brighter, but this looks awesome. And I can't believe we were able to engrave on a 3D object, but there's an issue. What if you don't have the 3D model on hand? What if you purchase something online or you have an object in your house that is three dimensional, it's not a flat surface and you want to engrave? That was my issue with this metal object. I didn't have a file. If you don't have the file, you can 3D scan the object and add that to the laser engraving software. I happen to have a 3D scanner from this video where I scanned my wife's objects and hid them in the house. Make sure to check it out. I will use that scanner for this object. As I'm scanning this, if you would like to purchase the EM Smart AXI Pro laser engraver, I've dropped a link down below. It'll be on Kickstarter first, then on their website. Okay, I've scanned and added the file to the software. Let's add the design, choose the power settings, and engrave. That looks absolutely amazing. It's just beautiful. I noticed it wasn't perfectly focused, so I changed it just a tiny bit, ran it one more time, and this just looks so good. Now keep in mind, this clip wasn't sped up at all. That's how fast this engraves on metal, and it could even go faster. 3D engraving opens up so many possibilities. You no longer need a flat surface. If you're in the market for a laser engraver and you need it to engrave on three-dimensional objects, plus have a fiber laser engraver and a dial laser engraver, I I've dropped a link down below for the AXI Pro. If this engraver is too big, but you still need a dual laser engraver, take a look at this video. 